Hey everyone, my name is Nick and I wanted to make a video to help people out with any issues that they might be experiencing with their cable internet connection being unstable, disconnecting, cable re modem rebooting, that type of thing. I have a small cable provider in my town who's not one of the big cable providers and um, they struggle with some issues keeping their infrastructure maintained and when they send out texts to fix things they don't always necessarily know um, how to fix things and I just don't think that they have good enough testing equipment to really troubleshoot many of the issues and some of their solutions just aren't really what's in line with the industry standard. So I've been struggling with this for months and I finally have it figured out so I wanted to share with all of you guys um, how to read the information off of your cable modem so that you can see what you need to do to get your signal strengths to the proper levels. So in order to get to the page in your cable modem that'll show you what you need to know, you have to go type in 192.168.100.1 in your web browser. Now I have a Netgear cable modem, but this is the same for an RS cable modem or probably any other manufacturer. It's going to prompt you with a login prompt. The username is almost always going to be admin, A-D-M-I-N, and the password is going to be password. If that doesn't work for your specific cable modem, look up the model number on Google and find out what the default login for it is, and it should be that login. I'm going to cut in real quick and here and tell you that if you can't get that 192.168.100.1 page to load, you might have to plug your Ethernet cable from your cable modem directly into your computer. So you would get rid of your router and if you have anything else. So this is just temporary so that you can get to this page so you can see what it says. This doesn't have to be left this way. You're just doing this if you can't get to that 192.168.100.1 page. Once you do that, you can get to this page. Now this will look different, but you need to get to something that looks like what I have up on screen here. For mine, you just click on cable connection and then you see this. So this is a lot of numbers and it looks kind of confusing, but let me explain what's important. So you need to look at your downstream channel, you need to look at your power, and you need to look at your SNR, MER. And then you need to look at your upstream channels, and you need to look at your power, and you need to look at your downstream, and you need to look at your power and SNR. Okay, so, and you might even have upstream here. So you have these things, and really all you care about is the power. None of this other stuff, don't worry about what it says, whatever, doesn't matter. So originally, before I started this whole process, my power right here was reading 15 dBmV, which is way too high. So the spec for this, the power is supposed to be between negative 5 and positive 5. All right, so if your numbers, if you look here and your numbers are less than negative five or over positive five, then you're having either too much or too little power coming in from your cable company. And then when you look at the SNR MER, um, if this is good, this will probably be okay, but this needs to be, this number here on all of these needs to be above like 33. So, if you look at the upstream, you need to look at the power. And the power here, anything below like 52 is good, right? And then same with this one. This applies, same as above, so it needs to be plus 5, negative 5, and the SNR needs to be above 33. So initially, my issue, I had plus 15 here, which was way too high, and then I had 58 here. So this upstream is how much power your cable modem has to um, amplify itself to talk back to the cable company. So if the power is too high, it's just going to distort and it just doesn't handle it. And when that was happening, my cable modem was rebooting. So what the cable company did is they tried to install splitters, right? And a splitter will either take away... Um, or a splitter, so depending on how much, how strong the splitter is, you have like negative 3 dB splitters, and then you have negative 7 dB splitters, and a splitter will always take away 
from this downstream power, but it'll always add to this upstream power. So that's the thing that screws a lot of people up with splitters is it'll bring your downstream power into spec, but it'll boost this up above. So in my situation, because my power was 15 too high, really 15, really 10 too high to become right on the edge of spec, 15 too high to be like right where it should be. Um, this power here was like up at 58 because they had a minus 3.5 dB splitter and they had a minus 7.5 dB splitter. So they were taking away 11 power here, but they were adding 11 power to this number, which completely threw everything out, right? So I don't know why cable companies or this cable company doesn't know about what I'm about to show you here, but this is what you have to do to balance these numbers. So this is what's called a forward path attenuator. And what this does is unlike a splitter, it only reduces the uh, downstream power. So it doesn't affect the upstream power. It may be a little tiny bit, but not much. But mainly it only reduces the downstream power, right? So in order to get mine perfectly into spec, I used a negative 6 dB forward path attenuator, and I used a negative 9 dB forward path attenuator, right? So I was able to introduce 15 dB of loss into the um, downstream power and not really affect this upstream power, right? So there's also, this is what you have to do. You just have to look at your numbers. So do the math, figure it out, say, okay, so if my power is like at plus 10, right? Ideally, I want to introduce 10 dB of loss to get it down to zero, which is the absolute ideal. So you would need to probably get probably just one of these 9 dB. Um, or, you know, like, let's say it's just a little bit over, let's say it's like six or something you could get one of these 6 dB. And then if you look and you say, you know, like, oh, hey, my upstream power is like 35, and, you know, like, my uh, downstream power is like, I don't know, like plus 6 or something, or plus 8, you, you could get something called just an attenuator, which works the exact same way as a splitter, so it uh, decreases the downstream and increases the upstream. So just look through, um, look through this page and make sure you still pay attention to this one. So this was actually one of the things that was really throwing me off was this one little channel, this downstream OFDM. Um, and this is kind of a control channel for DOCSIS 3.1. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but um, this was when I put the 6 dB splitter on, just the 6 dB, this was just, this was still at 7 dBmV. It was still too hot. So all of everything else was barely in spec, like all of these numbers were in spec, but this one was too hot and my internet connection still didn't work properly. So um, I hope you found that helpful. Um, I hope it was easy enough to follow, but really just remember, so this number here should be at zero, but it has plus or minus five tolerance. This number needs to be above 33. This number needs to be like 40, 42 uh, to like 51. So if this is higher than like 51, 52, you might introduce issues. And then this one is the same as the above. So plus or minus five for this number and above 32 or 33 for this number. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them. I know this isn't the typical type of videos that I put on my channel, but uh, I just want to put this out there because I had a really tough time like finding all this information in one place and kind of understanding what it meant and what I needed to do. Uh, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And if you want, check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.